Glam fam, Linwood here, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about central centrifugal cicatrixial alopecia. I know that's a mouthful, and I'm going to explain to you guys what it means here in just a moment. In this series, we're talking about alopecia, and I started off by explaining to you guys the difference between breakage, shedding, and alopecia, in case you had any questions on that. From there, we went into uh, traction alopecia, then postpartum alopecia, male and female pattern baldness, and now we're on central centrifugal cicatrixial alopecia, otherwise known as CCCA. This is incredibly common in women of color, especially in black women, uh, and I'll tell you why here momentarily. You'll notice in black culture, a lot of times, from the time that we are able to get our hair done, we're doing a lot of braids, you see a lot of extensions, you're seeing two-year-olds these days with relaxers, things like that. And I will say, as a licensed cosmetologist myself, I've had a large number of clients I've had to explain that the relaxer burning your scalp is not an indication that the relaxer is finished. If any chemical is burning your scalp, get it off immediately. I don't care if that relaxer is not fully processed. I would rather you have hair than cause damage to your scalp, especially leading to infection and all sorts of things and don't even get me started if you're if you're a diabetic or something like that and you're allowing these abrasions on your scalp knowing that your healing time is going to be slower it could cause a lot of issues a central centrifugal cicatrixial alopecia is basically can be broken down in a number of different terms so central implying that it starts typically in the center of the head uh, right around the crown to the apex of the head which is the highest point and the crown to the apex, which is the highest point of the head. Usually it's located in that area. Centrifugal, which implies typically is in a outward motion, so it starts inward and it gradually expands and grows outward. Cicatrixial, implying that it deals with scar tissue because the scientific name for scars is cicatrix, and alopecia, which is baldness. So just so you guys understand it, it's basically baldness. It starts in the center of the head and works its way outward. You see it quite prevalently in black culture because of different things like braiding with extensions. Now, it also used to be known as hot comb alopecia because people assumed that it was because of the hot oil when they were doing hard presses with hot combs. Getting hot and, and sliding down to the scalp and burning the scalp, which can cause some issues if you are doing that time after time again. More prevalently, I would say different things like the constant weight of hair extensions if you're doing them rather frequently. Issues like if you're sweating in your head and it's drying your scalp out, instead of shampooing that and conditioning it really well and bringing that moisture bounce back up if you're scratching and things like that you can actually cause scar tissue due to the constant scratching if you find that when you get stressed out you're scratching the scalp and things quite a bit it would definitely be advised that you try your best to lightly massage the area or find something else to do with your hands if it's an indication of stress. If it's something that's dealing with dryness of the scalp, it's better for you to do a co-wash or a light shampoo with something that's sulfate free in order to bring your moisture balance up. If you're getting a chemical service and it's burning, instantly get that chemical out. And I will say, if you notice if you're someone that is wearing relaxers, things like that, you need a stylist who's going to work like this right here. Relaxers, the maximum amount of time that you're able to leave on there for a mild relaxer is typically 13 minutes. For a super, it tells you 18 minutes, I'll tell you now. I don't know any head of hair that can hold up to 18 minutes with a super. Don't do it. Stick to 13 to 15 minutes on any relaxer you're welcome. You need a stylist that's able to work quick and the timer does not start when the relaxer is finished being smoothed out. The timer starts from the moment that relaxer touches the head, okay? Uh, so just keep that in mind. But you want to keep in mind a lot of times people are starting relaxers around the top area of the head here and then as you're rinsing they start out rinsing everywhere else and they get to that section last so a lot of times you're seeing chemicals sit there longer which can cause damage to the scalp you're seeing people who are not properly basing the scalp for a chemical thereby protecting the scalp from that chemical which is really harsh and a lot of times you'll see where in black salons things like that we are prone for sitting people under the dryer and the portion of the dryer where the heat is the hottest is usually right in that crown area. So that is going to be an area that's more prone to dryness and things like that because of the evaporation of the moisture from that section. That being said, if you're a licensed stylist, please keep in mind the dryers have a low, medium, a high, and a perm setting. Perms are only for permanent waving. Don't use that. Low, medium, or high. Check with your client and see, okay, are, are you uncomfortable? Is it too hot? You might need to go for medium. 
my clients can tell you my dryer literally has a low and a high setting a majority of my clients i put under there on a low setting if they're under the dryer at all because i just don't utilize it a lot people have things to do today they don't want to be in the salon for hours under a dryer just keep in mind the better care you take of that scalp the better that you're going to see that hair do now you can have a number of different issues with hereditary factors and hair loss but usually with CCCA you're not going to see a hereditary factor come in place because it deals with scar tissue uh, so just keep in mind that you want to be delicate with that scalp if you're noticing that scalp is excessively itching stop scratching and shampoo uh, or get it checked out and make sure it's not a fungal infection something like that on the scalp uh, because you definitely don't want to cause permanent damage which could lead to hair loss due to something as simple as scratching the scalp. So I hope that this video and this series has been informative and helpful to you. If it has, please make sure to subscribe and comment down below. If you have any further questions, leave me a comment. And until next time, you guys, take care. God bless, stay glam, and you know I love you, boo. Bye-bye.